How do you decide who sings the lead on a song? Do you each try out? Uh, actually, it just depends on he. He knows how our voices sound, and then he ends up picking whoever's voice sounds the best for the songs. That's how he usually decides. Yeah, whoever whoever can do a good job is all that matters. We usually go. We usually go by the tone of you know tone of voice. The music too, like the tone, the, yeah, like the Thunderbirds have a song out now. We're doing uh, the voice sounds a lot more like John's type of voice, so we. Uh, we thought that Don could do the better job on it, so we had him sing it. I started playing probably around 15 years old. I used to play drums, and I turned on to singing. And I couldn't do either of those two, so I picked up the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Moved up. I started uh, when I was around 11, 11 years old. I've, I was always a guitar player, and uh, <laughs> now, now I've moved up to bass, you know. But uh, uh, it was always in the house when we were kids. It was always music in the house, so we... It's always been around us. There hasn't been any question of whether we would play or enjoy it or not. It was always there. So, uh, you know, as a kid, you just kind of pick it up and uh, still keeping it up. I started playing when I was about 13. I remember listening to uh, my brother playing downstairs with a couple other people at the time, and uh, I always kind of, like, wanted to play with them, but I never really... Nobody knew, wants their older brother. I never really knew how to play then, and I was just starting out then, but... Um, I used to try to play a lot of the stuff they were playing then, you know, upstairs while they were downstairs. And uh, finally, about, you know, after two years, um, I could play just about anything they were doing. And at the time, they had one of the people that was going to be leaving in the band. And, uh, yeah, we fired him. <laughs> right. And uh, so he left. And then another guy that was in the band at the time who was a singer. Um, was leaving also, so I sort of took uh, their places because I sang, so I, I sort of did um, both things, you know, and helped the band out a lot. Just like now. Just yeah. looking, looking for a raise. But we never paid right. twice as much money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, How long have you been anyway, playing, Don? Oh, I've been, been playing for a while. I started out as, as, as a fluke. I started out, uh, they, they called me up and heard that I was a drummer, which I was. I was a drummer in the Drum and Bugle Corps, and uh, a band asked me if I wanted to try out for their for their band. So I went in cold turkey, practiced on a friend of mine's drum set for a day, went in, tried out for the audition and got the job. <laughs> and uh, that was, I was about 13, right around when the Beatles came out and uh, I was heavy into the Beatles. I wanted to be one of the Beatles, like the Beatles. Well, you, you're still with the Fab Four. I'm still with the Fab Four, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And uh, started writing, after, singing and writing soon after that. We try to practice every day when we're in the bars, when we have, we play the night, we wake up about 11 in the morning, head to practice at 1 or something, start learning new songs, work on originals, we try to get it in every week, at least three, four days a week. Yeah, because on our sides of playing. Yeah, because on the days off, we like to just have our days off. And then when we're in here working to play, we might as well put in a good 10-hour shift and get, you know, four days of good work done and uh, with the playing at night and with the rehearsal during the day. So it's, it's, a, it's a full time job when you're here. Do you have any musical well, influences? I'd say. Oh, probably the Beatles a lot. I'm into Johnny Winter, but that doesn't mean nothing. <laughs> it doesn't show it in the band. <laughs> it's not something you get from the group. But as far as our original music, I guess... Uh, I've always been like... Probably the Beatles the most influential. <laughs> yeah, vocals too, band. probably the Beatles. Vocal bands, yes, vocal groups. Beatles, Searchers. Uh, Jackson Brown. Jackson Brown is my, my favorite writer, so I'd say Jackson Brown. Definitely influenced. Seeing you write all the music. Yeah. My ideas for my songs... Um, will come to me usually at weird hours of the night most of the time when there's no noise, and there's no people around, uh, just total silence and things that have been bothering me or things that I feel good about I'll write about and uh, work them into songs. And usually when a song's about 90% done, I feel it's about 90% done, I'll present it to the band and the band will start working on it as a tune for, for, our, for the Frocks project. And in a rock and roll band, yeah, you get to travel, you, see, you get that's, to meet a lot of people, you get to meet some great people. Uh, you make a lot of friends, and it's uh, the nice thing about it is too that 
you're always doing something you enjoy first off and you're always doing something you know about even if you're in a different place it's not like a new job every week you're always when you get there you know what you're going to do and you know what you have to do and you get to try it on with some new people so that's, generally I like you know we like meeting the people we've always liked people and it makes a big difference I think as far as the show we're not doing it for the money the worst thing about being in a uh, being on the road a lot actually it's fun but actually I'm married so I have road problems <laughs> I just assume the, uh, I don't even know. This is a good job. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's, well, no, it's, it's just tough being away from the family all the time. You don't get to see your wife and your kids and your friends, and you don't get to go to wedding receptions, and you just barely make funerals. And it's, uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's true. Th this, this type of work just takes all of your time. It's not yeah. like you've got time for anything else, or you can make appointments or, or whatever, because this comes first. I mean, when the phone rings and you got a, you got a job, you go, regardless of what family commitments are. And that's real tough. It's real tough on the family, and it's real tough on your friends. Yeah, Star Search. Yeah, that, that was good. We had a good time with that. That was only uh, probably three weeks ago, a little over three weeks ago. But originally, we had uh, we'd sent them a tape like last September sometime. And uh, they called us back a little over a month later, said they thought the tape was real good, but they didn't have any spots left in last year's season. And they felt that the band was real strong and that it would be worth it for us to wait till this year, the, the 87 season, because they had a lot more open weeks and they felt that if the band did well, we could stay on the show a lot longer. And uh, we went down, they called us back in May and uh, had us go down for an audition. And uh, it went real well, it was real quick. I mean, we were in and out of there in probably a half an hour. But uh, we went in, did our two songs and uh, and it wasn't like you get to watch it again later. It's, uh, thank you very much, we'll call you. But it, it looks good. We're hoping to hear something from them uh, any day now, pretty much, actually. The 1-800 Project is actually just Fox. We've had the name for a long time, and in New England, people, we built a reputation of as Fox. So we have to keep the name because of the, the reputation. We don't want to lose any work. If we ever get a national thing, if we do the Star Search show, it'll be as the 1-800 Project. And if we have a national release as far as the album or a single or something, it'll be 1-800 Project. Uh, Fox has been used by another band in England five, six years ago, and so we don't want to end up with a lawsuit. So the name will be changed to 1-800, but only if we get a national thing or we do a, a national show like Star Search. <laughs> this interview has been the highest point of our career. Probably no. that we've played like we've done guest spots with the Guess Who in front of in Glens Falls, New York, for, for 25,000 people. That was probably our high point. Also, we yeah. went, we went to, when we went to Bermuda, I, I thought that was Bermuda. a high point. Yes, played we Bermuda went, twice. We went to Bermuda for like uh, two, two months and all. And that was a real high point in our, our careers because it's just so beautiful there. And we got to meet some other um, pretty important people there that played in bands. Like we, we met uh, Niels Lofgren and we met um, Andy, Newmark. Andy Newmark. Andy Newmark, right. And, uh, it was a good place to be. It was a real nice you know. experience. But the, uh, right now we're hoping for this new Star Search thing. That would definitely be the national exposure is where it's at. And that's really what we're interested in. And the release of our new album. And the release of the new album, right. We got a new album coming out. And maybe after that we'll probably go back to Bermuda again for another month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rough stuff. Just having two sets of brothers in the band is a, really a, a plus for us because we, we just get along real well. We understand each other. Um, one I was, you know, understands the other one pretty much how he's thinking and stuff like that, you know. It's been a, definitely an asset to playing uh, Keeping us together. brothers, yeah. Keeping yeah, well, I, I think as brothers, either you get along or you don't. And you know it right off, there's no question about it. I mean, it's yeah. after you hit a certain age, it's not kid stuff anymore. And we've all gotten along real well and it's worked out. It's been, uh, I, we think it's been beneficial. And besides, your mother will never let you throw your brother out of the band. That's right. And that's right. Why, how we stay together 15 years.